Maite, I know that uh, access is your middle name, but uh, at the same moment, we've, we've just gone through several years of reform called No Child Left Behind, and a lot of our children are left behind, aren't they? Yes, they are. I think uh, one of the most important things uh, to, uh, to point out is that the, navigating the financial uh, and student aid system here in the United States is difficult for many Americans, uh, particularly those who are uh, first generation, low in, come from low income families. So it's a difficult process to understand, to navigate, and many Hispanic families, uh, particularly those who are first generation families, um, really don't think about the college process early on. And I think that could be one of the most important um, changes we can make in this country is to ensure that families learn early on what college uh, will cost for their child and how to navigate the financial and student aid system and, um, and how to pay for college. Uh, I think that's one of the most important things that, that we can do um, to help um, ensure that families understand what the opportunities are that do exist and to um, and for them to have the opportunity to have a voice and discuss where there are the gaps and where there are the needs. Can you prepare for something that is far off and increasing rapidly in price? It goes up sometimes two and three times the rate of inflation year after year after year so you're you're trying to hit a moving target if you're a working class family trying to get that kid into uh, post-secondary education. It's definitely not easy. But I think for um, speaking from, um, I, my family immigrated to this um, country when I was a child and we had this experience. And I think if my parents had had access to uh, information that they could find useful to, for planning for college, it would have been much easier for us and um, not so difficult to achieve. Um, so I think it's, it's a very common um, issue. So, I mean, you're talking about something that's often called social capital. And if you don't have it, the only way to get it is to get it. I mean, I was the first person in my family to go to college and my parents had no advice for me because they had no idea about how to do any of this. So you just got to do it. No? I mean, I, I, I don't want to be mean to the kids who, who can't get help from their parents, but if help from your parents is critical and they're not going to help you, what do you do? You just say, oh, well, that's it. I can't get help from my parents. There's, there's got to be a, a vanguard generation that sort of takes the hit, takes the hazing, and, and gets on with it, no? I think, you know, um, like you, I'm, I was uh, pretty much the first in my family to go to college as well. My parents provided uh, moral support. Um, in a way they couldn't, the financial, as, as uh, Maite was mentioning. I knew I was going to go to college. I knew I had to figure out how to go to college. And I think part of the challenge is addressing t is a two-pronged one. Institutions that are need to effectively reach out to Latinos. And that doesn't just mean translating a document and putting it uh, in a warehouse waiting for us to call. It means really reaching into the community and those who are leaders. And, and second, then, the responsibility does lie with families and students to also make sure that we can find that meet in the middle, um, that they know what's available, they know what's important, and know how to pay for it. When I went to college, there was something called the Basic Educational Opportunity Grant. It was a federal program. It was means-tested. And since we didn't have much in the way of means, I got a decent grant. And the federal government has made a lot of money off me in the, in the following years, because I went on to have a decent career and so they've been paid many times over. But I think a lot of the shift has been away from grants and aid toward loans and now kids routinely finish school with twenty and thirty thousand dollars of debt. Like what used to be an apartment or a car. But now it's just a, a payment that goes on, stretches on into your thirties in, in many cases. This looks like it's only getting worse as you look at the increases in the cost of higher education. Uh, has that been a worthwhile approach to, to move from grants to, to loans? Has it been working out for kids? Well, I mean, uh, w this is sort of counterintuitive, but one of the major drivers of tuition inflation is aid. 
And you're absolutely right that we've seen a move away from aid that's specifically targeted to low-income people to higher and higher income brackets, where now you have something called a federal plus loan, where it doesn't matter what your income is, you can get this. Um, but all that aid has an extremely inflationary effect. And you can look at it this way. If I had a dollar and I used to buy a hot dog for a dollar, and then the federal government came and told me, here's two dollars, and by the way, all the hot dog vendors know I'm getting this extra hot dog voucher, they're going to charge two dollars. And that's what we've seen. And so we have a real big short-term problem where you can't reduce aid because that makes college less affordable for people right now. But if we don't, then that vicious cycle of tuition inflation keeps going. And we see this remarkably in higher education where tuition or costs inflate even faster than in healthcare. And it's healthcare that we think is the market that's totally out of control. I would just add, um, I, I agree with that. And, and you know, obviously it is better to have grants and, or, or for families to be in a place where they can pay a large part of the tuition. But you know, that, we all know that's not very realistic. But I think the danger also is to, you know, if we do talk about, you know, the, the highly rising costs, et cetera, for colleges, private or public, um, I think we, we don't want to put families in fear, and, and that is, you know, to, to discourage them from college, because I think it's important to encourage them that the benefits as a result of spending that initial money in college on their children is worth it, and it pays off later in life. Even if you do have the loans, at least, you know, you can pay them as you progress in your, in your career.